Thanks, Jay. Bet you guys have never seen a guy walk on a stage with one of those that's broken that badly. Well, first, I'd like to thank you all for being here. It's very exciting for me to, uh, to give this, this talk. Uh, I've seen a lot of the other talks online, and if you have a chance, I encourage you to do that too. My talk tonight is going to be about my dreams and building my dreams and what it's meant for me and how it sort of transformed my life just in the last few years being associated with old stuff. My title is called Bold and New Ideas. I highlight the word old because I've started to realize my dreams because of the old stuff that I've been dealing with. You all can probably remember 70, 80, 90 years ago or seeing pictures of 70, 80, 90 years ago and, and what things seemed like the roaring 20s. It all seemed better way back then. Well, I'm going to intertwine my stories tonight about my dreams, about my vision, and of course, building trust and relationships and how important it has been for me to do what I've done so far. And I've got a lot more to do. And I'll tie in the chandelier just a bit in my talk. I, I highlight it. I don't have one. You're not going to see this one tonight, not live. But, uh, but I do have an admiration for chandelier. Most guys, fast cars, crazy things. Me, chandeliers. It's unfortunate. I go back to old Monroe. 70, 80 years ago in our beautiful downtown, like many other downtowns across America, we had a booming, bustling economy. Thousands of jobs, beautiful buildings, incredible life. In fact, this building we're in today, the Palace, a wonderful destination shopping resort. Well, this is what I yearn for to bring back in the old buildings that I get to restore. And again, in my stories tonight, I'm going to reflect that. I'm going to start by telling you about the first dream that I had. And like many Americans, home ownership is a dream. I worked hard, went to college, began to work in the, the workforce, saved a few dollars, had a realtor. We had a love-hate relationship for six to eight months. I loved to go see houses. He hated to continue to show them to me again and again and again, and me never deciding on a house. But finally one day he calls me and says, Michael, I've got a house. It sounds like your type of house. They just dropped the price by 30%. You're going to get a deal. I'm a deal guy. So I said, let's go see it. So we rushed over into our historic neighborhood, the Garden District. And there was this house, obviously remodeled in the 1970s. Unique siding, beautiful paneling, acoustical tile ceilings. All the stuff you yearn for is a young single guy looking for a house to entertain and have fun with. Well, nonetheless, we walked inside, and I remember very distinctly when uh, I looked around this house and, and saw some of the features, again, the paneling and the acoustical tile ceiling and whatever else was there. But as I peered through the house, I saw one thing that sort of stuck with me, and it stuck with me through all the buildings and everything that I've, I've been able to buy and renovate so far. There was this beautiful Art Deco chandelier, and it sat alone back in the back of the house, in the dining room, but you could see it from the front door. It was dusty, beat up a little bit, but man, did it have some personality. And I thought right then and there, I know that chandelier still has life in it. And so does this house. And thus began the building of my dreams. I acquired that house very rapidly, began to bring family over, and they looked at me like I was a lunatic for buying this piece of you-know-what. Three years later, fast forward, renovation, I used that chandelier. It was in a very key piece of the house and it became a very prominent feature. Everybody said it was great. All the girls that I had through there said, that's a beautiful chandelier. So I knew I'd done the right thing. Well, ultimately the girl I ended up marrying. I was dating at the time. I thought, you know, if I'm ever going to get married, I've got to upgrade. I've got to have a bigger house to build a family, and, and she'll trust me more if I have a bigger house in some place with a bigger mortgage. I'm not going anywhere. So I, uh, I put my house up for sale. When I put my house up for sale, not thinking that this would be a rapid process, uh, threw the sign out. Within five to six days, someone called, came by, said, 
I like this house. Then he brought his fiance in. She said, I like this house too. It was a house that I grew up in, just like that I grew up in on a historic farm in Mississippi. So immediately she had a connection. Of course, she loved the chandelier too, which I don't blame her. And they said, we want to buy your house and we're going to pay you full asking price. And I said, are you sure? I mean, how often do you get that kind of offer? So I said, okay. They said, but one condition. We want to move in Friday. I said, this coming Friday? They said, yes, we want to move in on Friday. Or at least within the week. I said, well, if you can give me until at least Saturday, I'll get you in the house. But I didn't believe it. I didn't believe they were going to show up. And I did not understand the value of that historic home and what it meant to people from an emotional standpoint. So the closing comes on Friday. They show up. They write a check. All I had done was told the movers, be here tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. And by the way, I may call you and tell you it's not going to happen. They give me the check. I leave. I've got to move. Where do I go? What do I do? I go rent a storage unit. I call the movers, say, we're on. I call the girlfriend and the family, say, can you shop by the house? I need to help packing up. They show up, start packing up. I start whizzing around the garden district and I see this next beauty. Well, now I know these old chandeliers, these old little beauties like this that are broken down and beat up, they've got life in them. I can make them better. And this next beauty had personality. Two stories, wood frame, beautiful ironwork, except for it was overgrown with bushes, paint falling off, plumbing broken, a really disaster case, no chandeliers, track lighting everywhere. And I thought, this thing deserves better. And I brought the family over and said, what do you think about this house? It's Friday noon, afternoon, I just sold my other house. What do you think? And they looked at me like, are you crazy? I said, I know I can make it happen. So I told the realtor that I was working with, I said, I want to buy this house. And oh, by the way, I want to move in tomorrow morning. It was vacant. So after they pulled themselves up off the floor and said, okay, whatever you want. And I said, by the way, I'll close on Monday. But you have two hours to let me know because I'm going to go buy another house down the street. Don't tell anybody I didn't have another house down the street to buy. But that was what was happening. 45 minutes later, they called back, said the house is yours. The next morning, I moved in. Two months later, I get engaged to the girl. So it worked, my plan. And over the next three years, I spent renovating that house, turning my vision. First, it was my dream. Now it's my vision into reality. Going back and taking a home, a historic building, to what we saw in the 1920s in our downtowns, like we see in downtown across America, these old buildings that deserve a chance. Well... My life lessons continue to grow, and the next step in my life, I learned a whole other group of lessons, tools for the toolbox, if you will, about trust, about building relationships. And this particular property, oh, and as you know now, I'm impulsive. One Saturday morning, I take off into downtown Monroe, walking the street, shorts, t-shirt, cap. I walk in and I see this building with this door open. As I walk in, there's an old guy in there, an old timer now. I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm selling stuff. Because they were full of junk. You can see the stuff that was in these buildings. I mean, these buildings were packed full of junk. But there were some good things in there too. And I stumbled across these beautiful pieces of marble and granite sitting there on the floor. And I said, what are you going to do with this? He said, I'm selling it. I said, how much do you want for it? Make me an offer. I said, okay. I said, I'm going to embarrass you. He said, try me. So I said, I'm going to give you $15 for those pieces of marble. He said, will you give me 20? I said, sold. So we, we kept this up for a couple of hours, you know, going through, because there was a lot of stuff here. And by the end of it, I said, what are you going to do with the buildings? I'm selling it. How much? Make me an offer. I said, I'm going to embarrass you. He said, try me. So I threw out a number, not thinking anything of it. Again, this is a Saturday morning, wandering off. My, my wife, her fiance at the time, had let me go on my own. Mistake. 
So after I threw out my number, he stopped for a moment. He said, will you give me $5,000 more? I said, under one condition. You take the key, you lock the door, you give me everything in these buildings and the buildings. And I said, we'll have a done deal. He immediately reached out his hand, looked at mine, said, son, if you're serious, you got a deal. We shook hands. I gave him a check two days later and on the buildings. And that's where the real fun began. But the lesson I learned in reaching out my hand was the lesson of trust. And over the next year, year and a half, we turned some of these smaller commercial structures into storefront buildings. Historic storefront buildings, bringing back the dreams of the 1920s and in the process, working with other people's dreams. Because guess what? People want to be a part of something that's special. So after that project and after building that trust and that relationship and after building these buildings and working on these buildings for some time, I started getting phone calls. People telling me that, Michael, we have buildings too, but we don't want to renovate them. Michael, we have these buildings. They've been in our family for years. And what I started to learn was more about their past, what they were passionate about, what their families were passionate about, what they put into these properties. And as I began to develop these relationships, I started to understand what was important to them. And they in turn turned around and said, Michael, we want to sell you these buildings at a great price, but we want you to have the same intent that you've had with the other properties. You've shown what you can do. Now show us what you can do with ours. Help us relive that dream. And with a handshake, with that trust, we did another deal. Now, I've worked on the vision stuff. I've worked on the trust stuff. The next thing I began to understand was that this was bigger than me. I buy a few old buildings, fix them up, but there are others that have a vision. There are others that have a dream. And they want to be in these old properties too. And I began to see the ball start to roll. And it is still rolling. And again, like many challenged cities across America that are trying to bring back their downtowns, we're seeing the same thing. We're seeing other people's dreams realized now in restoring these old structures. And yes, that first picture you saw is this picture. Uh, Another uh, interesting uh, restoration. When people can walk in and see this and say, Michael, I want to rent this building for you if you'll build it for me, and we'll design it and it'll be great. And they turn it into show places when you walk in. Something you would see in a big city. What I've learned in this process of making impulsive decisions, taking bold ideas and new ideas, and harvesting others' dreams and relationships is that we can change something and make it very, very special. And I'm excited to say today that after three years, and after building numerous relationships, and buying ten commercial historic structures, every single one of those purchases has been done with this. No letters of intent, no purchase agreements. All ten have been done with a handshake because they understand the vision. We build the trust. We develop the relationship. These are the tools that we used back in those pictures you saw in the 1920s. These are the tools that I think we've got to get back to today. Share your vision, build the trust. Repair this old chandelier. Do bold things. If you do bold things, if you share those visions, if you relate to these people and get to know them, you're going to take that old chandelier that's beat up, worn down, arms hanging off, and you're going to turn it into something that is brighter and more beautiful than you can ever imagine. This isn't the end for our town and many towns across America. I'm excited about historic preservation and what it's done and what it's going to continue to do. Be bold. Share your visions. You don't have to build a dream from scratch. You can take something old and make it new again. Thank you.